Today, group three will be then Eugene Nider's theory. And here is the table of contents. Let's begin with the first section, overview of Nider's theory. Eugene Nider was an American linguist who developed the dynamic equivalence viable translation theory and one of the founders of modern discipline of translation studies. A theory is a cohesive and integrated set of assertions used as principles to describe a set of facts. And among mm -hmm. numerous fundamental theories of translation, the theory of NIDA always plays an essential role in translation. According to NIDA, no comprehensive theory of translation currently, currently exists because Translating is essentially a technology which is dependent upon a number of disciplines, linguistics, cultural anthropology, psychology, communication theory, and neutral physiology. Theories of approaches to the task of translating and different orientations provide helpful insight and diverse ways of talking about how a message can be transferred from one language to another. Therefore, he divided his theory into four major perspectives in terms of translation. As you can see on the screen, number one, philological, number two, linguistics, Number three, communicative, and number four, social semiotic. These perspectives create a scientific and systematic methodology used in translation. Moreover, these categories are not always antagonistic, but complementary and supplementary. And to be more specific about the four concepts that I've mentioned. I would like to invite my friend to talk about the first perspective, the philological category. So on about the philological perspective, Bruno Eugene identified when two kinds of equivalence in his theory from when dynamic. So on what is uh, formal equivalence. Well, formal equivalence is not in the sense of formal language, it's in the sense of language forms, not from content distinction. So he wrote about formal equivalence. His emphasis is on the language forms. The other wrote that if what's important is formal equivalence. Um, he means that target text message in both form and content, but especially form should closely match the various text elements. So the standard of uh, equivalence when we're talking about uh, formal equivalence is form the structure fidelity or bias towards the source language forms and structures. So we want the toy text to actually look like the source text if we lay them side by side and feel uh, this text on its surface, the surface, um, the language forms and structures look a lot like the source. That's form equivalence. And what type of equivalence we're going to prioritize is ones that are associated closely with literal approaches to translation. And on the other hand, NIDA opposed this to dynamic equivalence. Uh, dynamic comes from the description of quote or unquote dynamic relationship that exists between receptor and message. And he said that the dynamics of relationship should be substantially the same as um, which exists between the original receptor and the message. So uh, the standard for dynamic equivalence is equivalence of effect. So we want the target text readers to experience that text the same way the source text readers did are uh, reading in the source language. And a couple of related ideas about dynamic equivalence or equivalence of effect is that um, dynamic equivalence translations are trying to attain a complete naturalness of expression, because if you want to target language reader to experience the text in the same way, 
uh, it's hard to think natural or idiomatic. Um, also, it's associated with uh, a free approach to translation. Now, the translation theory was not achieved overnight, uh, rather, it has gone through decades of unceasing practice and exploration and has been developed through continuous revision and improvement. Another is good at summing up uh, experience from practice, deepening it into theory, and then guiding practice from theory. Therefore, NIDA's translation theory can stand the test and the liberation of time and has fresh and a live value of life. So uh, uh, we move on to the next uh, perspective, the linguistic perspective of the theory. Uh, so I'd like to invite uh, Milo to continue our presentation. So please. Thank you, Dad. Hello, everyone. My name is Ile, and Dad has just given you the information about physiological perspective. Um, in this part of our presentation, I would like to talk about the linguistic perspective. The focus on finding the equivalent by means of linguistic elements such as the rule of grammar, content, or meaning. First of all, because translating usually include at least two different languages. So it were unavoidable that many people investigating translation challenges were focused on the difference between the source and receptor language. Important investigation of many linguistic structure by people like Sapper or Chubeskoy. So Chomsky and his colleague added a dynamic dimension to language structure to rule the use of transformation. All this led to the publication of a number of book on a book on transformation with have focused on primary attention on correspondence in language structure. In addition, the limits of success of machine translating because it requires so much re-editing and put editing, according to Summer, but even with highly sophisticated technique, the resulting mm -hmm. translation often sound very unnatural. Finally, philosophers have made important contribution to the language's approach to translation. They develop also encourage the use of common language in communication and have reduced the belief about the reliability of natural language. So that all I want to say about linguistics a perspective. And now let Ngung give you the information about communicative perspective. Thank you, Ngung, please. Uh, thank you for this presentation. I'm Ngung and it's the next period of the presentation. I will clearly present the communication perspective of NIDA theory. NIDA points out that an understanding of the ways in which language is used in interpersonal relationships in any society is crucial to the act of translation. It also emphasizes the importance of the communicative function of language and the role of translation in facilitating communication. Uh, from a communication perspective. Neither theory suggests that uh, translation is not only about transferring meaning from one language to another, uh, but also making sure that uh, the translated message effectively conveys the meaning, sight, tone, or noise setting to the target audience. Neither also recognize that uh, language and culture uh, clearly in, interwise uh, and that effective translation requires an understanding of both the shock and the target culture. In order to achieve successful communication, uh, translates, translator um, must take into account not only the linguistic differences between the shock and the target language, uh, but also the cultural differences in meaning, values, and norms. Moreover, 
we need to pay attention to paralinguistic and extralinguistic feature of oral and written messages, tone of voice, loudness, gesture, and a context are obviously important in oral communication, but many people fail to realize that analogous uh, factors are also present in written communication, uh, like a format, a quality of paper, and rhetoric uh, for effective impact and appeal. Form cannot be separated from content, seen from itself carry so much meaning. It's an overview of the communication perspective. I would like to invite Soon to continue the presentation. Okay, now I uh, will continue presentation with six and five sociosemiotic perspective. This perspective views communication as an art that involves numerous codes embedded in the sociocultural context and communication communication will be influenced by all these factors. For example, the impact of a verbal message in not start of work alone, but of extralinguistic and paralinguistic aspects like the background of the speaker, his or her sincerity, knowledge, and expertise. Here, translation that take all this factor into account will be sensitive to source and receptor sociolingual codes. Eugene, Eugene Nider, a famous American translator of the Bible, is well known for his works in sem semantic structure and translation theory. His comments on sociosemiotics are quite positive and threw some light on the nature of sociosemiotic approach. The great advantage of semiotics over other approaches to interlingual communication is that it deals with it deal with own type of signs and codes, especially with language as the most comprehensive and complex of all systems of sign employed by humans. No, no holistic approach to translating can exclude semiotics as a, as a fundamental discipline in encoding and decoding science. We will uh, next with some neither allies the advantages of the this of this socio socio semiotic approach. It perceives language as the upshot at the outshot of a host of a host of sociocultural factors and hence rooted in the everyday world of reality rather than in an idea speaker community. It can be verbally creative as its focus is on actually spoken language. It is not bound by reductive rules of language. It does not con con conceive of language as a rigid system with clear current boundaries and a well-established meaning underlying it, it acknowledges the malleability, malleability of language and the in indeterminacy of meaning. And the last one is takes into account the inter interdisciplinary nature of codes, which tend to expand the boundaries of translation activity, including the Sociosemiotic approach helps one understand better not only the meanings of words, sentence, and discourse structures, but also the symbolic nature of distinguishing between designative and associative meanings. It also emphasizes the, the fact that everything about a message is is always carry a meaning. Uh, so we uh, we will continue with the next section of presentation. Uh, with Yen, presentations. Thank you, so Now I'm going to talk about Nidal's theory contribution. As we all know, Nidal was a major contributor to translation theory. Therefore, his influence continues to this day, right? Yes. As we can see, this theory is applicable to various contexts and industries. For example, in international relations, 
it is important for diplomats and negotiators need to to understand the same meaning from translated text in order to effectively communicate. In marketing, translations should convey the same persuasive message, even when the text is in a different language. Moreover, in many fields such as linguistics, anthropology, and sociology, because um, it provides a framework for understanding a language. Next, that's about the list. We can see NASA theory has revolutionized the field and has great implications for the plastic of translation. It championed the concept of dynamic equivalence, which is emphasizes um, conveying the meaning of a test rather than attempting a literal translation. His work provided a much needed theoretical framework and has shaped the field of translation. And that is all about our work translation. Thank you so much.